Oh, hey guys, real quick before we get this video started where there's a bunch of really cool bin stuff to come. I've got a last minute announcement that happened after shooting this. I got to cram in the front end of this video. I'm going to be at the Game Jam South Gaming Convention down in Huntsville, Alabama on the 6th of May. And I hope to see you guys there. That's it. That's the announcement. Uh, holler at me if you come or comment below before this video gets started if you're going to be there at the Game Jam South. I'm excited for it. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Now, on with the bins. Oh, hey, I've sort of acquired a minivan today, and we're going to take it to the Goodwill bins on the west side of Nashville. Um, really, the minivan has nothing to do with it, except that I normally drive a smart car, which big things don't fit in. I really don't foresee me going to this bins and buying something large enough that uh, a minivan can handle it, but... It would be cool if it did, you know, a nice shift robe or desk. Actually, I need a new gaming desk, so that'd be cool to find. But I don't know. We're going to the bin, so just stick around. Where's the parking brake? Uh, oh, it's on the floor. Um, Tendo does the bins. Minivan edition. I don't know. We've got to do something to change it up, right? We've only made 800 thrifting videos on this channel. The camera's going to fall. Wow, it didn't fall. This van is smooth. Way more suspension than my smart car. Um, if you go Googling or YouTube searching for Tendo Nashville bins, you'll be able to see that we've been to this bins a whole bunch on this channel. Um, so, you know, you're not gonna get any new information on this one. Uh, a lot of the times, if these videos bring new people to the channel, they're kind of like, well, I wish you'd have explained this bins more. And I, and I tend to not because I've been here so many times, I'm a little desensitized to it. But if you do go search Tendo Nashville Bins, you'll sort of uh, probably find an initial video where we went here for the first time where I explained it a little better. So go give that a look if you want to. Do a little playlist of Tendo with the Nashville Bins. I don't have a lot of high hopes bringing home anything crazy for resale from this bins today. I would like to. Uh, I've been doing okay on eBay sort of started Macari lately, selling a, a lot of toys and stuff. So it'd be nice, but uh, I'll be happy enough if I can bring home some stuff for the workshop. Uh, Cause I have the first half of the day today to myself before I have to go babysit some kids, which is exciting. Hey, maybe we'll take home some toys for the kids and then I'll be their favorite uncle. Here we go, Goodwill Outlet. Found some pretty awesome finds in the book bin. Yu-Gi-Oh! Beckett. I have a bunch of these Becketts in my Yu-Gi-Oh! collection, but I've never seen one with a lenticular glued to the front. I, it's really tempting to take that off and put it in a frame, but obviously I'm not gonna do that. It's just sort of hot glued on. Uh, golden pencil box put inside. A miniature chess set, magnetic. It's kind of beautiful with all the pieces. Yu-Gi-Oh! book's probably going to be fine of the day, though. Isn't it beautiful? Definitely stick around to the end. We'll go put that on the Yu-Gi-Oh! shelf when I get home. That's going to go front and center somewhere. Heart book, keyboard, head wig. This is not a Goodwill that I've had a lot of luck filming at without getting in trouble and stuff, so we're just taking it easy, not not as much digging footage, but I just found a Canon power shot camera. Uh, I'm about 55% sure that it's like $50 and above if it's in working order. It's got a little blemishing on the handle, but uh, this might be the moneymaker find of the day. Of course, I also didn't find this on camera. I found this at the beginning of a rotation. Boom. Looks quite broken, maybe scratched up, but if it works, let's go. Let's go. Is today my lucky day or what? It's Yu-Gi-Oh number two, and it sucks because it's torn, but this does say, I think, uh, I think it says free promotional inside. I thought it said free poster, but it's still bad. Hold on. It sort of has that poster feeling in the middle. Yes, there's a poster. Oh my god. Okay. Let's go. Alright, we're getting that. We're getting it. 
Honestly, I have so many issues of this magazine. I better check the rest of them for posters when we get back to the shop. That's awesome. If uh, you're sort of new around here, I collect Yu-Gi-Oh stuff, so that's going home with me. What is this? My lights. There's a giant stack of these uh, poster frames. camera was actually in a bin full of camera stuff. Uh, there was a, one, a giant Polaroid camera too, but I didn't get it. Would have loved to have it. I forget what they call them, like land cameras? Something like that? Okay, so normally what I would do is I would go back to my workshop and dig through all this stuff. We'll probably still go to the workshop after we have this little chat. So if you don't want to hear me talk for a few minutes about both what we got and my experience today, just fast forward to where you see me back in the shop. But as a lot of you will have probably noticed, not been a lot of videos on the channel uh, for reasons that are probably going to be obvious to a lot of you and confusing to plenty of other people complaining. I haven't been able to be my normal thrifty self lately trying to dip my toes back in but uh, really what I want to talk about is the fact that being as I've been away from going to the bins as often as I used to going back in with fresh eyes maybe forgetful eyes sort of brings up a few points we probably haven't discussed on this channel in long enough that there's new people here uh, that won't have heard some of these things and people that have been around for a while that probably either know them because they shop at these Goodwill outlets or uh, have watched enough that they maybe know these things. But I think I, I've spent a lot of time being desensitized to how wild it can be in a Goodwill outlet. Because I walk in there today and I'm almost overwhelmed. I'm sort of feeling not really a panic attack. I wouldn't say it's that dramatic, but just that sort of high stakes. Uh, uh, I'd already sort of forgetting how pay, forgotten how painful it is to watch people find things I'd like to get. Like someone found some Power Rangers toys and I'm like, oh my God, I want those. And someone found a Polaroid that's like sort of a, uh, a grail for me giant Polaroid. I don't, I don't even know what the point of them is, but I've just always wanted one. Um, so that happened and, and a lot of other little things that I just sort of forgot because I used to do this every day and now I've been doing it like once every couple months if I'm lucky. Uh, but like something else I've sort of forgotten and I'm saying these things not really to complain, but to sort of warn some of you that if you like these videos that you're watching and decide to find some of these outlets for yourself, you sort of have to be warned that uh, us resellers can sort of be an excitable bunch. And, and if anybody's sort of picking up what I'm putting down, feel free to comment below. I just had four or five interactions in there, both with shoppers and employees where I'm just like, oh, I forgot about this. So there's one couple that was sort of bickering back and forth at the beginning of a rotation about how to strategically get the stuff that they saw that was brought out. So some of you watching that just like like Goodwill content and stuff and may not have come across outlet or bins content as much, you're sort of in for a rude awakening if you don't understand how these places work because they wheel out these giant tables full of stuff and people sort of like hands behind their back are peeking all around to like see once they're allowed to dig what they're gonna dive for. So there's this couple just like eagerly shouting across the room at each other about what to grab and of course, I'm sort of standing there ready to grab something they're talking about. And so now I'm having these calculations in my head. Am I going to be the long armed asshole? Because I'm six foot six. My arms reach all the way across the tables. That's about to fight this woman over this expensive thing that I might be able to resell. Of course, I was sort of rescued from that moment because as they brought out another bin, I saw some computer stuff you'll see in a moment that I would have rather had than what I was going to potentially fight her for. Uh, but you know, there's just these sort of high stakes things and these calculations you have to make about how hard you're going to work to get this stuff. And as you might be able to sort of tell, I'm, I'm a good bit sweaty. I mean, it's really humid here in Tennessee, in Nashville where I am. So that's part of it. But like 
when you're digging for bags full of stuff, it gets it gets sort of serious. So if you find yourself wanting to go to these Goodwill outlets, as my channel has been very, I'll admit to it, very responsible for sending lots of new thrifters to these kinds of places. But if, if you're thinking about doing it for the first time or you're traveling and you're gonna go to a bigger store like this the first time, you just gotta go in sort of psyched out to just be calm and and be cool because like you know you can get a little bit it's easy to get a little bit butt hurt when you see people getting all the good stuff it's a little easy to be butt hurt when when you know people are being aggressive i've seen people in this very store almost fist fight over shoes that sort of stuff happens I, and i guess the last thing that I, wasn't really fresh on my mind uh just for a refresher for some of you and for some of you that are new these stores are so wildly different from one another. I just uh, previously went to the other one of these stores in Nashville, and it's wildly different from this one. I've, of course, been to these outlets all over the country. And what I can forget sometimes is how up to the management at these stores uh, certain things can be that make things so different. So there's a lot that's at the discretion of the manager. Uh, if you want to buy something really heavy where the weight of it, because you buy things at these stores by weight, right? $1.49 per pound here, I think, which made this bag like 17 bucks. Um, sometimes you'll find something like a weight, you know, and they'll be like, hey, can I have this for a cheaper price than buy its weight? And they'll often, almost always be like, yes. Sometimes it'll be reasonable. Sometimes they'll know the value of something, so you're not going to get off too, too scot-free. Uh, but I had a, a bunch of picture frames, which I want to talk about really quick. Uh, it's hard not to turn this into a ramble because I actually came here looking for picture frames, coincidentally. And that's what the Goodwill bins will do to you. You'll say, oh, I want to go to the bins and buy picture frames, and then you'll find yourself very easily spending $100 on picture frames. But there was all these uh, sort of uh, workplace sign uh, picture frames in there that snap open and close to hold the artwork in, which makes them worlds better than those cheap Walmart uh frames that you can buy for a few bucks and i've got a bunch of artwork back at my shop that I'll, I'll show you that i'm just dying to put in picture frames and hang up in my workshop and these frames would have been nice for that but i went and weighed them and they were coming out uh to be quite quite expensive and i'm probably still gonna kick myself for not buying them because for the sake of longevity and keeping some of my posters fresh at the shop they'd be nice to have but i wasn't gonna i wasn't gonna pay full price for them because they're metal and at every goodwill bins i've ever been to you go up to the manager and say hey these are metal can i get them cheaper and uh, a worker told me saw me carrying them around and had to talk to me about them said well ask the manager you might get them cheaper which you know i already knew this and was already hoping to do so but I'd already seen the manager here being a little bit uh, short with customers. I wouldn't say really to an unreasonable degree. I'm not trying to dog on him, but obviously his day wasn't wasn't uh, going as well as he'd like. And and as being as I've been to enough of these Goodwill outlets, I certainly sort of understand this. It's sort of a higher stakes job than your normal Goodwill store. You've got a lot. The people shopping are more aggressive. Uh, there's there's a lot more stocking and movement going on in these stores than your average Goodwills. So I'm not holding that against him, but I just already got the feeling that when I was going to go up to him, I was not going to have an easy time to get a reduced price. Uh, you know, I certainly wasn't ex expecting it or thinking I deserve it or anything like that. Uh, so I said, hey man, can I talk to you about these picture frames? There's about 20 of them. Is there any way I can get out of here with a cheaper price? Because they, they're actually quite heavy. They're metal. And he just, and he said, nah. His response was, nah, can't. They don't let me price uh, things grouped together, which was to say he could only give me an individual price on an individual item, which if that's a rule, fine. I, I can't I can't uh, fault them for that. But still, I think they were heavy enough that a dollar a piece for each one of them would have gotten me out, there for, out of there for a little less than half than what they would have cost by weight, which is sort of the scale that they will usually price those items for you. So... His sort of instant dismissal was was a last minute bummer leaving there because I'd like to have those frames, but I'm not about to break another hundred dollar bill out of my pocket and and buy them. It's just not going to happen. I'll I just I'll keep buying frames individually per piece of art at regular Goodwill stores. So take that for what you will. No major complaints here. Highly recommend this store uh, in Nashville. In my sort of neck of the woods Midwest, this is one of the better ones. So. Uh, I, I don't really fault it at all. Let's go ahead and go through some of the stuff that I have here since I'm off my soapbox. Um, 
like I said, I would normally take this stuff back to the shop and we still will. We'll, we'll jump to the shop here in a minute and put a couple of these things away. But there's just a couple things in here I can't wait to get to. And let's start with the camera. Check out a, a little screenshot from eBay here. This particular camera is uh, somewhat valuable. And, and I, I'll go ahead and make this a little bit of a tip to you people shopping Goodwills. Don't pass up those cheap film cameras. I Now, I probably look up a hundred of them for every one I find that goes for that much, but I just always know, for whatever reason, some of these uh, old film cameras that zoom or have some other functionality other than point and shoot uh, typically sell for a few more dollars than you would think. So I was smart enough to look that up. Uh, if I didn't look it up, I might have passed it up because it doesn't look special, but it is. Uh, if you want to look it up yourself, sure shot, supreme, you know, it's just, it's worth a few bucks. So here's the thing with this iPad. It doesn't look like the screen smashed, though I don't know. I can't really tell. It's definitely sort of cracked a little, smashed up, but I have a charger here. I'm betting that the screen might actually be fine, but that uh, unfortunately, probably it's going to be like iCloud locked. I right, see what I mean. It's coming on. There's no way this iPad's perfectly fine and not iCloud locked and unresettable. You know, it's gonna be password protected. We get home, plug it up, and it's gonna have Find My or whatever. Yeah, so password. Okay. I'm iPad unavailable. Try again in one minute. Um, we'll go home and try to reset it and see if there's any sort of iCloud lock on it. But look, it's actually already charged 94%. I don't know why I didn't just try to turn it on in there. But if it ended up tossed in here, it's probably because someone couldn't reset it. So that means if there's any money to be made, maybe it's for parts. I really don't know. I don't even know what generation this is. I don't have high hopes that it's like a newer great generation because there's bezels, uh, black bars on the screen, and then the camera looks very old generation. So I don't know, but we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go home and try to reset it. I have a laptop. Actually, you know what? I have my laptop with me. We'll do it later. We'll do it when we get home. Just give us something to do. Um, I don't think there's anything else I have to show here. We can save some of this for the shop. Um, I did buy a keyboard. It's a cheap keyboard, like a really cheap keyboard from Amazon, probably 20, 30 bucks. But uh, I honestly just bought it because that delete key is cool. And I sort of have a keyboard that I use for gaming with, an, uh, with a real cornucopia collage of random keys from keyboards. So I'll probably take those two red keys play some something else and give this to a niece or nephew yeah okay so enough talking if you're gonna go to the goodwill bins for the first time go back and watch a few more of my videos heck there's a really good chance if you go to one for the first time you can find a video by searching tindo and that goodwill bins and uh my video will come up and you can get a little bit of a, a, a experience or explainer before you go uh so you don't have to go feeling quite as fresh as I did today or quite as green. I, I really felt like I was going for the first time when I walked in there. I was like, I don't, I don't remember how to do this. Okay, I gotta go. I'm starving. I'm currently resetting. Uh, just gonna take a couple minutes. It looks like it's going to work. It says iPad recovery mode. Um, I don't remember what this process is like. There's still a chance that it could reset and uh, say you need to input your iCloud password to unlock. And if we get to that point, I'm probably screwed. But also, I used to remember this stuff better. I think maybe iPads, older iPads didn't have that. I don't know. I'm not even going to try to guess. But it doesn't yet seem to be iCloud protected. Uh, like, if you found my iPhone right now, if I lost it and you thought, oh, I'll just reset this and use it, you'd be stopped. Because no matter what you did, you'd have to put in my iCloud password. But we'll see. We'll see in 78 seconds. I don't know if I pointed this out in the car, but it is really scratched and dinged up, but there's no screen bleeding, so that's really what matters. And I don't, I thought they said the model number here on the back, but I'm telling you it's been so long. Oh, and I can't see that well anyways. Not that small. Where's my readers? That's what my mom always says. Need my readers. Designed by Apple model. A2. <laughs> I can't see it. A2. Let's take a picture of it and zoom in. Uh, A2152. 
Let's set that up. See what your model is. iPad A1. No, I'm dyslexic. A2152. Uh, it's an iPad Air 2019. 2019 model. That's not bad. It's newer than the last iPad I owned. I bought an iPad last time. 2015, 2014. When they sort of first started coming out. Sometime around when they started coming out with SIM cards in them. The last time I bought one. 2019. New, I guess. 314. Might be a $150 eBay sale if I wanted to flip it. Sort of tempting to keep it for the shop just to do eBay stuff on, but we'll see. This is this is what happens, right? I find some stuff to make money, and then I'm like, I should probably keep this. Unfortunately, I don't think Hedwig's worth but 10 or 20 bucks. Build a bear, build a bear. Hedwig, and it says something. I love you, I love you. I better hide this before the kids get home. What would be really devastating now is if we get it on and there's no iCloud protection that locks it and then like top half of the screen doesn't work, which I don't think is going to happen. I don't really think I've experienced a partial not working touchscreen on an Apple device since like very early iPhones. Actually, while we wait, I'll tell you an iPhone story. I had the my first cell phone ever was the first iPhone when it came out. Actually, I got it from my brother whose house we're at now. Uh, I think I paid for the newest BlackBerry at the time in exchange, and he gave me his iPhone. It worked out even, um, but we had warranty on it. Thankfully, because I had the first iPhone, the touch screen went out partially, like the top of the screen would go out like three or four times. So the first iPhone I had three or four of them brand new before I finally got one that worked, which doesn't really. Sound good for Apple, but that's really that. Maybe the first iPhone 3G. Uh, that happened. I think I lost partial touch screen. I think we're okay. It says your iPad has been restored to factory settings and is restarting. Okay. Thank you. This is going to be awesome. And this is like the last iPad I've had I had. I don't know if it was Air or if they were calling the Mini then, but it was a lot small, smaller than this. So I think this is going to be fun. If this has usability with the pencil, I think I might be happy. Uh, I'll allow to connect accessory, okay. Come on, this is a lot of waiting. Are you gonna celebrate with me, Div Div? Hey, you gonna be happy if the iPad works? Yeah, you? What do you think? Yeah, me too. We're just waiting, we're just waiting, we're just waiting. Here, would you, come here, come here, come here. You wanna type on my keyboard? Good job, good job. What did you say? You know how it's all snotty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Factory reset. Let's go. Press to open. English. United States. Quick start. Set up manually. Jenny, do you remember the Wi Fi password? Uh, Capital C? Yeah, yeah. It may take a few minutes to activate your iPad. This is probably where, if there were iCloud lock, it'd be getting this. But can you believe I found this fully charged? Someone, someone bought or probably had this and their kids left a password on it and locked it or something. They couldn't remember it. And they're like, well, I guess it's trash. Um, instead of Googling how to reset it, which I had to do. I couldn't remember how to do it off the top of my head. It's been a hundred years since I've had to factory reset a locked Apple device. I'm not putting any locks on it. If somebody else finds this iPad, they can just have it. Restore, don't transfer data. I will probably sign into my, it may take a few minutes to set up your Apple ID. It's pretty, even though I've got scratches on the screen, the brightness, I guess uh, this is one of the newer high brightness, probably slightly higher frame rate. Enter Mac password. I've got three Macs. How am I supposed to go? Oh, okay. My MacBook Air. Never mind. I got it. Boom. Isn't that crazy? Works perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't know what to do now. Do I start downloading stuff? <laughs> Download YouTube? I don't know. YouTube's sort of lost its magic for me since I stopped posting. Like, I don't know. I try to get on and watch stuff and I just can't pay attention. Let's play Fortnite. That's a first for me. Working iPad from the bins. 
hit the thumbs up button if you think that's find of the week. Interesting development. Um, you see how there is a chunk out of there? I, I, I did notice that and it's really hard to illustrate, but there are scratches on the screen that make this very imperfect. However, something that I did just notice is that, um, see how I tap here and nothing really happens? If I do that down here, uh, let's get out of this. There is some scream, uh, I don't even know what you'd call that, but it's only happening on this bottom half, which I assume is from whatever drop caused that. Uh, which, you know, if I listed this thing, it'd probably be something I'd have to sort of explain or whatever, but uh, yeah, it's not perfect. It's been dropped, but it's still working. I know I've done this a lot on this channel. I, I don't know if I'm keeping it or not. I know I've been uh, logged into it and using it and stuff, and I like having it, but at the same time, it's a couple hundred bucks to be made, but at the same time, you can buy them used, but in way better shape for like two or $300. I think $300 is the going price. So I feel like I can only realistically sell that one for 200 maybe. And then I sort of play this game where I'm like, well, I could put it on Marketplace and offer it up for some guitar pedals. <sighs> which I really would like to do, because hold on. This is not a typical part of my haul, and I wasn't even planning on putting it in this video until I said uh, what I just said, but I actually came back from Nashville with some Nashville things, some guitar pedals. These were not thrift finds at all. Uh, this stuff showed up at the thrift. Man, would I be happy. Uh, I've never found guitar pedals that nice at the thrift. Um, they're always, cheaper ones, but I have found some and uh, I wouldn't mind putting that on Marketplace and letting somebody trade me a nice pedal for it, which I, I do that a lot and I don't ever really say anything about it on this channel because it doesn't really seem pertinent, but uh, it's easy to trade nicely electronics on Facebook Marketplace for just about whatever you want. Now let's dig into the bag of everything I got besides the iPad. Uh, not terribly valuable, but you know, I'm a sucker for the Build-A-Bear, so I got that. We'll be throwing these on the shelves here in a second, so stick around for that. Um, the keyboard is a pretty exciting find. Pretty useless, pretty cheap keyboard, not that great. Uh, you can sort of see one here. Pretty similar cheap stuff. And I've got a lot of these around just for the buttons and putting them on other keyboards. So uh, I also have a keyboard box. So these, look, there's another one. So there you go. So I'll actually put that in there. And when I get around to building a new keyboard sometime soon, I've got all the supplies in the world. Uh, okay, so I've already listed this. It hasn't sold or gotten any hits yet, but I sell nice-ish film cameras every week, one or another. I didn't really need to buy this. It's just a cheap fold-up mouse, but it was nonsense. Couldn't leave it behind. Uh, Woody hat. I have dozens. I don't know why I keep buying them because I'm a crazy person. Art supply stuff. There's the bag for that mini chess set, which I forgot about, which is exciting. I don't even play a lot of chess, but everyone needs a mini chess set. I don't know why I keep buying these, but it's probably because I do have a lot of art supplies between this shelf and then over here. And then I can't turn the camera that far around, but I got a bunch of paint brushes and pens and stuff. So I've just been buying a couple of these to sort them in Lego. As always, again, more art supplies. This sort of brings up another note. I always wanted this warehouse thing to do cool stuff in before I moved back to Kentucky, but couldn't afford to do it in Arizona because it's so expensive out there. When we left Arizona, I had all the paint supplies in the world, but sort of didn't feel comfortable using them inside or around my tiny apartment. And now that I have this workshop, I've got a paint corner where I can sort of paint things. Again, not really something that comes up on this channel, but I, I am buying more supplies to sort of replace what I've lost. Staples. Um, I've said this all the time on my channel. I don't like buying or paying for uh, supplies. I hate it when it's time to go to Lowe's and spend $30 on a paint roller and tray before you even buy the paint. I brought all that stuff home for the bins because I have the space now. Same goes for staples. I just can't read. There's my staple sorter. Check this out. 
there you go so all different kinds of staples in here and next time i need that size staple i don't have to go pay for it not full price anyways dollar 49 per pound that weighed what a couple ounces so i paid pennies for it A little bit of more Lego. This is Bionicle, um, which I actually have a bucket of. I'll show you in a second uh, where that's gonna go, but it's pretty cool. A whole set of casters. I took off some other garbage. Wait, <laughs> three? Oh no. Okay, I swear to you guys, there were four of them. God, how useless is this gonna be if I can't find the other one? That's frustrating. Mini chess set, so excited about it. Just forget about the wheels. How did that happen? <laughs> I'm hoping it's just out in the car somewhere. Okay, mini chess set. Tell me you don't love that. And the note on it said all the pieces were there. So I'm just gonna not count them right now and leave it. Um, more Bionicle stuff, a fidget clicker thing, uh, button. Always collecting buttons. And I think that's it. So let's go over to the shelves real quick. The normal Lego stuff just sort of goes in here. Uh, the Bionicle stuff though, look at this. Whole bucket full of just filled up over time. Here's my Yu-Gi-Oh shelf. It's in a little bit of disarray. Uh, but you can see I have some other publications like this one. That's a Beckett. And uh, I've got some Pojos, but these are gonna go in here. One of these days I'll set them up nicer and, and stuff, but. I love that stuff, and the fact that I don't already have either one is pretty awesome. Pretty happy about that. This is a complete mess, but there's more woody hats. I sort of have a bunch of these cameras that are listed and stuff over here. Uh, it's just where I've been keeping them. I, I, I've got a bucket sort of they should go in, but I don't know, that shelf's empty. I've just been putting them in there. I have a caster box up there that you should go in, but I guess we should wait till we find the fourth. Of course, more art supplies that I got. Just notebooks stacking up. All right, guys, comment below. Let me know what your favorite thing that we got today was. Of course, for me, it's the iPad. I mean, I, you just kind of can't beat it. I love bringing home supplies for the shop, stuff that I will use and don't have to spend a lot of money on. That always makes me happy. I don't think I ever said a word about this Mountain Dew bag. Is that your favorite? Predators, Mountain Dew? I don't know. Hedwig, probably second, second favorite. Comment below what your favorite thing was, and then hit the subscribe button, turn those notifications on, because, uh, I actually shot another video after this one. I know I've said this before. Uh, the, the find for my next video might actually be as good. For some of you, maybe even better than this. So make sure you're back for that. The only way you're going to do that, at least in a timely manner, is to subscribe and turn the notifications on. So do that, and I'll see you next time. Until then, peace out.